I used to belong to a cult known as Ismailism. And as I make this video, I feel anxious and scared. My mom, my grandma, and most of my family are still devoted to this faith as I was. And I don't know what may happen when they see this video. I was born into this ideology, brainwashed and indoctrinated since I was a baby. And don't get me wrong, I got a lot out of it. Sense, community, communication skills, something to believe in, meaning in life and purpose, and most important of all, faith. And even my PhD in neuroscience. It was the Aga Khan, the leader of the faith, who had taught me the importance of higher education. And then in 2011, something remarkable happened. Something in my life became even more important than religion. In fact, even more important than God himself. And what was that? Having sex with women. I was a 30 year old virgin, never kissed a girl before. And I came to a profound realization. If I continue to live my life this way, studying and praying all the time, I will never get a hot girlfriend. And despite being a devoted good Muslim boy, I watched porn every single day. Imagine, I was the model nice guy in my community. I prayed every single day, went to the prayer hall seven days a week, but I had deviant sexual thoughts. I was horny. I wanted to desperately have sex with the hottest women in the world, especially white girls. This was forbidden by my parents. And I was fat, huge belly, 35 pounds overweight. I didn't give a shit about my health. In fact, I wanted girls to like me for who I am, not my body. So I refused to work out. I suffered from porn-induced erectile dysfunction. Yes. During my early 30s, when I was finally naked with a girl in my bed, I could not get it up. And this painful desperation, this deep thirst for women and sex was the key to my freedom. I still remember making that promise to myself. I consciously made a decision to stop praying. Luckily, my brain was trained in rigorous science and logic. I had already published a bunch of papers in top journals. My colleagues were Harvard professors and Nobel Prize winners. So I thought of it very rationally. I imagined several buckets, one for spirituality, another for religion, family, academics, good deeds. I saw them all as already full, but my bucket for sex, women, and expressing my masculinity was empty. So try to imagine this. One day, I just stopped going to Jamatka, which is what we call the prayer hall. And since then, I've only visited a handful of times. And it's quite possible that when they get a hold of this video, they will excommunicate me, which is okay. And to be honest, saying all this is very challenging for me. I'm very uncomfortable right now. But I can also see that a burden is being lifted off my shoulders. Dude, you gotta understand how ideology works. And if you find people in the world who belong to an ideology, who seem arrogant and refuse to accept reality, be careful. I know this very well because I used to be one of them. And the man I'm gonna expose today is the perfect example of this. Dr. Eric Berg, who belongs to not one, but two cults, Scientology and Keto. And there are hundreds, if not thousands, of scientific mistakes in his YouTube videos. He's hurting your health by spreading these rumors and misinformation. This guy is a damn chiropractor, but he pretends to be a medical doctor. He hides who he really is so he can sell you shit. Look, I also sell products, but I never hide who I am. I tell you everything about myself, the good, the bad, and especially the ugly. Let's begin with something simple. We usually learn this in 
first year high school biology. Like mentally until later in the morning or even the midday. So what's significant about that is that 70% of all your ATP is used by your brain. Yo, that's nuts. This guy thinks that 70% of ATP is used by the brain. What? What? Here's the truth. The adult human brain uses 20% of the total ATP consumption of the body. And uh, this is not the only study saying this. This is basically general knowledge. Now, 20% is still quite a lot because our brain is only 2% of our total body mass. So the fact that it uses 20% of your total energy consumption is still quite impressive, but it ain't 70%. So, so what's the real problem with this? Dr. Berg didn't hurt anyone by spreading this nonsense. That's not the point. My concern is that he didn't know such a simple thing and he's the most popular doctor on the internet. Like he didn't pay attention in high school biology. It just seems absurd, but there's more. No one on his team, no person caught this error until now. Okay, moving on to more fun. There's a little gland in the brain called amygdala, and it's very similar to the adrenal glands on top of the kidney. <laughs> Dude, the amygdala is not a gland. I know this very well because during my master's degree, I was recording from the medial interrhinal cortex, and that area is very close to the amygdala. But the amygdala is not a gland. There are only three glands located inside the brain. The hypothalamus, pituitary, and the pineal. The hypothalamus is my favorite because it triggers the production of testosterone. And if you've been watching my channel, you know how much I love testosterone. Again, these mistakes seem harmless, except they're not. And you'll realize if you haven't already, Berg is just regurgitating information he read on Google. He lacks depth of understanding of the material that he's teaching. He just memorized a bunch of stuff. And uh, that's why he makes stupid mistakes. I would never trust a guy like that. Now I'm gonna cover two more kind of silly mistakes, which you probably caught by now if you've been watching his videos. So let's talk about the seven reasons why you're tired. The first reason is adrenal fatigue. Ah, no, man. Adrenal fatigue is not even a real thing. <laughs> you're just trying to scare people. And uh, here's the actual paper that showed it. Yep, adrenal fatigue is a myth, but it gets even dumber. And so taking vitamin D right before you go to bed is actually going to help you sleep. It's not going to wake you up. What? He wants you to take vitamin D right before you go to bed? That's not very smart because vitamin D is fat soluble and therefore it must be taken with food that includes fat like eggs or beef or salmon or avocados. Now look, these mistakes even though they may make Berg look retarded, I'm willing to forgive him. After all, I'm a nice boy, remember? But then there was the keto cult with Berg as president. Let me show you. Wait, 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 wait. Let me first admit a few mistakes of my own. I used to believe in one night stands, having a harem of women who obeyed my commands and treating physical beauty as the only quality, the only value that a woman has. I was wrong. And I overcame that douchebag ideology after I fell in love and married the girl of my dreams. Now, I believe that only miracles, like how I met my wife, can allow us to progress towards enlightenment and freedom. Deep, visceral, emotional pain makes us become aware when we are trapped inside a cult. That other douchebag cult that I belong to was Real Social Dynamics or RSD, but I had no idea at the time. And I also made several mistakes when it comes to my own personal health. For the last 10 years, since I've been on my health and fitness journey, I've cared for one thing only 
getting six pack lean. Whatever it took, intermittent fasting, one meal a day, five day extended fasts, annoying cardio, restricting carbs. I tried it all, man. Keto, carnivore, vegan, so many fad diets. And I have maintained the six pack for more than eight years now. And despite the mistakes, I doubled my testosterone from 376 nanograms per deciliter to 801 nanograms per deciliter. I even doubled my free testosterone levels. But the mistake I made was that I paid no attention to muscle growth. I just cared for six pack abs and I regret this because at certain points in my life, I was way too skinny, man. Like I looked like I was starving effeminate. And if I had paid attention to building muscle at the same time, I would have had so much more muscle right. I was uh, very good at animal movement, dance, jujitsu, running, swimming. But when it came to progressive overload in weight training, I didn't care that much. Why? Because I was afraid that if I tried to pack on muscle and ate too many calories, I would gain a bit of fat and my six pack would disappear by eating all the carbs. And I was afraid that my kidneys could become damaged by all that extra protein. These fears kept me from building muscle for the last 10 years. So when I see Dr. Berg talk nonsense about muscle and keto, I gotta correct him because right now my number one goal is to pack on serious muscle and I've been making amazing progress. I can literally feel the meat on my body for the first time in my life and my wife is super happy about my new look. When I see the muscle in the mirror and the six pack is still there, despite all the carbs I'm eating every single day, I feel so proud, man. So now let's talk about what Dr. Berg gets completely wrong. So this is an important principle to consume two meals a day, uh, maybe even one meal a day, but I think two meals a day would be perfect. Listen, this is a huge mistake if you wanna grow muscle. And by the way, that's the purpose of this video that he's making. Berg is bullshitting. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Look, as a man, growing muscle should be your number one priority, especially as you get older. I learned this the hard way, man. Muscle is the most metabolically active tissue in the entire body. The more muscle you have, the higher your BMR or basal metabolic rate. Muscle automatically burns calories even when you're not doing anything. Lean muscle is what prevents you from falling, getting bone fractures and breaking your damn hip when you get older. And uh, if you're still a young kid, start growing muscle today. Don't wait till you're in your 40s like I did. But even if you're in your 60s, 70s or 80s, you can still grow muscle mass. But Berg says that eating just two meals a day or even one meal a day is perfect for muscle growth. That's utter nonsense, man. You gotta eat at least three meals a day and have enough protein in each meal if you are serious about muscle growth. I'm telling you this because I've been eating one or two meals a day for many years. And yes, if you don't care about muscle, then go ahead and do that. But if you do care about muscle growth, three meals a day is the minimum. Take a look. Here they compare muscle strength for different resistance training exercises with high protein intake at breakfast, which is HBR, or low protein intake at breakfast, LBR. Notice that eating a high protein breakfast gives you greater muscle strength with each of these exercises. Furthermore, they found that eating a high protein breakfast is the most effective way of increasing muscle mass. It is more important than eating all your protein at dinner. Indeed, the frequency of protein consumption is important and the amount of protein is also important. So how much protein should we get per day in order to grow muscle? Let's see what the chiropractor with absolutely no muscle on his body has to say. Number three, animal protein. 0.8 to 1.2 grams 
of protein per kilogram of weight. So I weigh 185 pounds. Uh, that comes out to about 84 kilograms, okay? So I should be consuming roughly between 67 to 100 grams of protein. No, buddy, you got it wrong again. Let me show you the scientific evidence. As men, we should be consuming up to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. So for Berg, that's about 180 grams of protein per day. This is so important that they repeated this sentence again in the paper. And look, even this study recommends three to four meals per day with high quality protein. Dr. Berg is spitting out false information, which is the opposite of what the science shows. Come on, man. Keto for muscle? Seriously? Here's a nature paper. Read the damn title. Ketogenic diet induces skeletal muscle atrophy via reducing muscle protein synthesis. They show a significant decrease in the size of different muscles and grip strength. Grip strength is normally used as the best metric for overall strength and longevity. Keto is so horrible that they're using it as a model for muscle wasting induced by starvation. And uh, the keto diet is doing this by down-regulating the genes associated with muscle anabolism. So, especially if you're suffering from sarcopenia, which is the loss of muscle in old age, stay the f away from keto. The last thing you want to lose is more muscle. And uh, I don't want to alarm you, but this study showed that keto causes a decrease in lean muscle mass and impairs cardiac function. So bottom line, stay away from keto and start eating more protein. But you may be wondering, won't that much protein hurt my kidneys. Like I mentioned earlier, I used to believe this myth. And uh, guess who still believes this myth? So by adding a ton of protein with your meals, that will not help you with this. It just creates more stress on your kidney. Eh, wrong. This systematic review and meta-analysis clearly demonstrates that high protein diets have no adverse effects on kidney function. Look, to be honest, Berg is not just some evil Scientologist. He's sometimes teaching good stuff. I've even learned things from him. But on the really important topics, he's a complete hack. So why is he doing all that? That's the relevant question. Why does he even have these bogus ideas? Understand this, we must go back to the lessons we've learned about ideologies and cults. Berg belongs to the keto cult. And in keto, you cannot eat that much protein because you won't be in ketosis anymore. Huh. You see, the goal of the ketogenic diet is to keep insulin low. But the amount of protein required to build muscle may increase insulin and put you out of ketosis. And Berg knows that. So rather than being honest and simply saying that the keto diet is horrible for muscle growth, he's promoting keto for everything. He's literally treating keto like a religion, like the savior of all our health problems. And that's very misleading and harmful. Look, man, the keto diet is great for some things. For example, pediatric epilepsy, right? The kids with intractable seizures. Even though these kids will suffer from kidney stones and bone fractures because of keto, their seizures will be reduced by roughly 50%. So it kind of works for this disease. And it could even work for really obese men in the short term. Unfortunately, there are no long-term studies because no one can actually adhere to the keto diet. Hence, many men who lose weight on keto gain it all back. But I will say that some preliminary data has shown that keto can be beneficial to Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease patients. So. For sure, it's worth testing for a very small percentage of the population. But it's definitely not for everybody, like Berg says. And it's not necessary to restrict yourself so much, like cutting out an entire food group. I transformed my body and have maintained my six-pack for many years now. 
after I doubled my testosterone levels, I kept increasing it as I got older. Hundreds of my students and coaching clients have done the same thing. It wasn't from keto or any other fad diet. It was simply by optimizing the gut-brain connection and eating the right stuff at the right time. And once your hunger and satiety hormones are balanced, you become a fat-burning, muscle-building machine. And you know what else happens when your metabolism is on point? Brain fog disappears. You don't feel tired anymore. And here we have Burr claiming that keto is also the key to reducing fatigue. You're just gonna run out of energy. And so this is why the ketogenic diet is so important for your energy. Not so fast, son. The fact is that blood ketones are directly related to fatigue and tiredness during exercise. These scientists said that this may be due to changes in neurotransmitters or to the reduced concentration of muscle glycogen. Another paper showed that fatigue and brain fog during keto may be due to mitochondrial DNA toxicity in the forebrain. So, if you're on keto or have been on keto and you know how you feel tired all day, sluggish and fatigued, stop taking Dr. Berg's words for gospel for God's sake and learn the science that I'm teaching you. And before I wrap this up, let's cover one more important thing. It's one of the most crucial concepts that older men must understand. Bone mineral density. Why should we care? Bone mineral density measures how much calcium and other types of minerals are in your bone. If your bone mineral density is low, it can lead to osteoporosis and bone fractures. We don't want to do that, do we? Let's see what Berg has to say. Let's talk about the best diet for a bone fracture. I wonder what diet that is. Could it be? You want to consume nutrient-dense foods, okay, low carb, as in healthy keto, and you want to definitely try to do some fasting that's going to speed up healing. It'll stimulate the stem cells, okay? So it's going to speed up the formation of bone and other tissues as well. You see how he snuck in healthy keto in there? What a genius, this guy. We should just believe what he says. After all, he's the knowledge doc. We don't need him to back all this up with science. We don't need to see the papers where all this crap comes from. Oh yeah, because uh, there are no papers to back this up. However, we know from science that keto decreases both bone mineral density and bone formation. So there you have it, buddy. Berg and the keto diet, they failed. But you may wonder, what type of brain gets easily wired for extreme beliefs? You see, Dr. Berg is also a Scientologist, and uh, I'm not here to make fun of any religion or faith. All I can tell you is that Dr. Berg's own son has been outspoken about their toxic relationship. His son is no longer in Scientology and he's teaching the world about his own traumatic experience. Some of the things he said about Dr. Berg shocked me about how Dr. Berg exploits his customers by selling them crazy supplements and uh, how indestructible his rock solid reputation is. He has a huge ego. You just gotta see it, man. Do your own research and draw your own conclusions. All I can tell you is that I somehow escaped from all the cults that I was a part of. Maybe it was my neuroscience training after all, or my love for curiosity, and now I'm free. I believe in myself and the search for truth, and I'll keep searching until my final breath. And look, if there's anything that I missed, or if I made any mistakes, please comment below and let me know. And if there are other videos or other topics that you would like me to talk about, please let me know that in the comments below as well. And last of all, I wish you the best of your health and fitness journey. Stay vigilant, my friend.